Everybody, welcome. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a nurse and also the owner of Florida Training Academy. And if you're local to Jacksonville, well, you also know me as a leader in the community. And today I have the wonderful Miguel Camargo here. Cool. Wonderful. Thanks for, thanks for having me. And so I love having you here. And um, ever since I, I'm, I'm really, um, I won't say the word envy is, you know, that's a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. I admire you. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel is everywhere. If there is a business event, there is Miguel. Um, and I, so I just love seeing you. I love your energy. And even on social media, the energy just projects. And mm -hmm. another thing I love about you, he's never tried to sell me anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like people, they will buy from people they know, love, and trust. And so you are definitely building that trust within the community. So welcome, that. welcome. All right, so what I know about you so far, you're a father and a husband, mm -hmm. Christian regional vice president of a financial firm. What yeah. does that all entail? Well, I'm a Christian. That's just my faith. That uh, that, has, uh, that really doesn't have anything to do with my firm. But we do, uh, we run a financial services that focuses on middle income families, uh, teaching them how to make sure that, God forbid, their loved one passes away. They don't. They're not having to go create a GoFundMe account. Yes. And then uh, living too long, they make sure that if you're, uh, when you live to retirement, you can actually enjoy your golden years. You don't have to go work at the golden arches. Yeah, I was speaking to someone else, and they um, they recently had, like, just started working at a job to where I think they were selling, like, life insurance policies or something, but most of their um, customers were older. And it was like, at that point, they couldn't even afford life insurance because it's so expensive. Yeah. And so we'll get to, you know, of course, the networking and the marketing. But if somebody wants to know more about your financial firm, um, yeah. what's the best way to communicate with you? Uh, you can obviously reach out through through social media, anything uh, anything that says, I am Miguel Camargo, they can find me. Uh, <laughs> or you can reach out through uh, uh, through any, any social media platform, you can find me. And so this is really intriguing me. The founder of Flow Networking Group. Yeah. What does Flow stand for? Future leaders of the world. Okay, I knew it had a meaning. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. how did that start? So it started probably about three years ago. I was at an insurance conference out in Amelia Island and uh, had nothing to do with my business. I was just there. Again, I'm, I'm putting myself in environments where I can meet people. <laughs> and I just saw these workshops of all these different companies and I just said, man, Nobody knows each other here. They're all there to set up vendor booths and and mm -hmm. try to. We don't communicate with each other. Each with each other when we're at the actual nah, events. No, yes. not at all. And as I'm at that event, I said, "Man, I've got a good network of people here in town." So I said, "I'm going to create a Facebook group, and I'm going to almost identify myself as an expert in networking in the very beginning, even though I've been networking my tail off for." 10 years prior to that, I didn't create an online platform. So I started a Facebook group, added 300 people to it, and then it's organically grown um, to almost 2,000 people now. So is this a public group where my viewers can find you? Uh, no, it's a private group. But they, if they find me on social media, again, I can always add them to the okay. group. Okay, and everyone, that is Flow Networking Group. And what is the mission behind the group? Because there's so many different networking groups, and we're kind of... I won't say tired of networking groups, but it's right. kind of sometimes it could be all advertising. Sometimes it's like if, if I'm a small business owner and I need help growing my business, mm -hmm. um, you know, what does your networking group provide that some of the others may not? Well, the main group is to is to serve everyone. It's not a hey post like you said post your ads every day and day. Don't no one wants to be spammed with fifteen videos of the same person. Mm -hmm. It's truly come in there, find out what your needs are, find your community, find your tribe of people that need you. Because I realized this, if people don't know who you are, they can't buy from you. Exactly. And entrepreneurship is a very lonely game. And social media makes it look very exciting. But as we created the Flow Networking Group, it's to truly build a community of people that are like-minded individuals. And we come from a lot of the same struggles, communities. And I don't like to play victim. I say, hey, listen, we come here together. Let's grow together. Let's yes. flow together. And let's make some money. Let's flow together. Yeah. Make some money. I love that. Yeah. Do I have your self-proclaimed name right? Are you the networking king? I'm the, the king of networking? Yes, I'm the networking king. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny that I, I just I just came up with that one day. Just ran. I'm like, I'm going to claim myself as the networking king. Man, I see you everywhere. I'm like, well, he's owning it. He is literally owning it. And on the last event we were at, I think it was the, that yeah. I saw you at Think Bowl yeah, conference. Think Bowl. Yeah, that was and a great on, event. On the back of your shirt, it was a wonderful event. And you all that's in Jacksonville, I know there's going to be another one in 2024. Yeah. And so if you're interested, just look up Think Bowl, I think events or media um, on YouTube. But what did the back of your shirt say? It said Networking King on it. Networking King. So yeah. you're branding yourself as the, the Networking King. king. Yeah, yeah. Do you know if the domain's available? I don't. I mean, I should look into it. Yeah, like yeah. as soon as we end this recording, Let's you need to look into it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, what I like to refer to you as a man on a mission to make connections that matter. Like because that. Um, networking is, I need strategic networking. You know, yeah. when I go to these events, it could be 100 people there. I don't need to shake hands and kiss babies with 100 different people. I, I need to make sure that I'm actually finding synergy. And so that's what I think about you, even though, even the events that I had, you know, um, we know that you're there. Mm -hmm. You're energetic. You actually engage with others. And um, it's, it's, it's attractive. Right. And so the, I, I haven't been um, doing any networking events in, in Jacksonville lately. But don't you have an event coming up? Yeah, I do an event once a month. It's, it's, uh, we host it at a business called The Underground. Uh, a couple of my clients and business partners, they've uh, started a, uh, a workshop space where it's built around giving entrepreneurs a place that they can meet. Uh, we're, we're right downtown uh, Springfield area. It's 1503 North Main Street called the Underground Collab. And it's meant on the basis of how do we provide people opportunities where they can meet, find the people in their community that they need, mm -hmm. and then not cost them every daggum dollar that yes. they have. Yes, networking, networking can be expensive because this dinner going to that different location. Yeah. So when is your next event? You said once a month. Yeah, so we, we generally would do it every the last Thursday of every, every month. So it'll be uh, June 29th from 6 to 9. Okay, and I'll make sure whenever whenever you all get through watching the video, um, whenever it's um, finalized, there will be a link in the description area. Um, are the meetings, are they televised? Do you record them? No, no, everything's literally, you're, you're live, you're in person, you're meeting those communities. Okay, all right, so... Um, how did we meet? Because I'm trying to think back. We met at uh, your events with, uh, it was the strategic... Um, strategic networking, yeah, yes, yeah, this, yes, yes. This is probably, um, I saw the event on Facebook, you know, in the event section. I said, oh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning afternoon event. I said, oh, I'll go there and I'll just say hello. I appreciate you for doing that. Yeah, that was, you're, you're always supportive, so I appreciate you. And um, I'm, I'm assuming you're from Hispanic origin. Yeah. But tell me about, like, where were you born and where were you raised? So I was born uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Uh, moved down here when I was nine with my grandparents. And then uh, Jackson has been my neck of the woods since fourth grade all the way through through high school, college. I just wonder why you're so passionate about Jacksonville. I'm like, yeah. you're, you're the networking king of Jacksonville for sure. <laughs> All right, so I know when I transitioned from nursing into business, because growing up, I was not interested in business at all. Mm -hmm. I actually thought that business owners were mean. Oh, really? It wasn't that they were mean, they were about their business and they were stern and they would yeah. tell you no. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I, you know, when I ventured into business, um, I, I did so because someone had influenced me to do so. It's like, okay. okay, they had an ideal and we worked together and, and the ideal became what it is today. Um, Love that. Florida Training Academy. How did you become interested in business and the financial industry? So I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, you know, my dad and my grandparents both ran businesses. So um, although my parents weren't married, I saw entrepreneurship at two different levels, whether it be your blue collar all the way to anything from network marketing to uh, buying and reselling products. I mean, I saw that from my grandparents at a very young age. So Wonderful. entrepreneurship was already was, was in my DNA from, the, from from a child. Yeah, what was your first business? Um, first one coming out of, I said one that I did on my own was probably selling reselling candy in high school. I did the same thing. I did it in middle school. Oh yeah. Someone told on me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Someone Sucker snitched hater. on me. Up to, <laughs> yeah. I, I I I saw opportunity. I was trying to buy. I was trying to buy buy a car. I saw one of those um, you know fundraiser box. Mm -hmm. Saw it in the trash can. And my grandparents had a vending machine business, so I already had access to a to a, a BJ's. Very Costco. smart. So, so I was like, X amount of dollars, find the profit. Boom, and then um, I want to start making money doing that way. Selling candy. Yeah. Oh, wow. We've been hustlers for a while. For sure. Very, right. So very since we know you as the networking king, why is networking important? Uh, networking is important because in the aspects of relationships, the one of the greatest things that I can tell you is networking has got me in situation and, and rooms mm -hmm. that my education or lack of education that would never get me in there because... Um, you know, growing up, you always hear the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. But to add on to that is, who knows you and what do they know you for? Mm -hmm. I like that. Because if people don't know you, they, they there's no way for you to, uh, again, I take it as a uh, as my responsibility to make sure my family's successful. Make sure the, the last thing that I have it, it means something. Mm -hmm. And so the, the networking really says, well, if my people are not afraid or afraid to get out of their, their shell and their, their, or their own little circle, it's my job to go find the resources and bring it back to the, our communities to say, hey, listen, if you need this, go to this person, go to this person, go to that person. I love that. And I love that. that is what networking has done for me today. Yeah, there was a, um, another um, 
business owner in Jacksonville of Hispanic origin. And I asked him to come and do the podcast. And he mm. was hesitant okay. to be on video. And I was like, but do you know how this would benefit your community? Mm -hmm. So that is a lot of weight to put on an individual. So I, I do understand exactly what you were just saying. Because if others in the community, how are you going to grow your businesses? You have a lawn care service. You know, you just can't keep networking within the same group of people. You have to go ahead and branch out. Mm -hmm. You have to be invited to those conversations in those rooms with the decision makers. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be hard for that to happen if you don't step outside of your comfort zone. 100%. All right, so to piggyback, to piggyback off the last question, why must business owners network, and this is a loaded question, <laughs> network, collaborate, and form strate strategic alliances during um, this season of uncertainty? And because I hesitate, let me repeat that. Why must business owners network, collaborate, and form strategic alliances during this season of uncertainty? And I'm talking about the recession. Well, I'll start off with this. Uncertainty really starts within your own, within your own family. If you're uncertain of your, your career path or whatever, you can always, you, you need to pivot. You know, the economics, we can't always control that. Words. But I truly believe, I live in a God economy. I create my own, I, I create my own economics around me. Yes. Because um, God is a creator. See, and the Bible says uh, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, if we're made in God's image, guess what? God's a creator, so are we. So, when there's, whenever there's a lack of or scarcity or nervousness or worry, mm -hmm. I sit back and I said, well, okay, because I still have those struggles at the same time. Well, how do I create something to get out of this situation? Okay. Mindset. Correct. Which is kind of touches base on creating strategic partnerships. You know, um, you, if you go back to Ecclesiastes 11.6, a lot of people will try to use that as, well, every, multimillionaires have seven to eight streams of income, right? Well, I want to have multiple streams of income that are in alignment with what I'm already doing. And a kingdom purpose. Correct. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the networking, I try to find people that I vibe with. I mean, I'm unapologetically myself from the first conversation. And I've been known to either make people laugh or turn them off. And I don't go out of my way to offend, mm -hmm. but I go out of my way to say, hey, can I vibe with this person right off the rip? And if I can't, no. Nothing wrong with it. Exactly. It's just, you're probably just not the person that I'm looking for right now. Because mm -hmm. I think in every season, you need those individuals that can either elevate you or support you in those areas. Because it takes a strong team around you yes. to, to grow and to even survive times of uncertainty. So if you're a business owner out there, find a community of people that you can share, whether it be resources, referrals, um, uh, money, obviously, opportunities. If, if someone's got a job coming up, how can we collaborate on this? How can I get yes. in uh, on, hey, I've got a job. I don't know if I can complete it myself. And don't miss out on 50% because you don't want to share. Correct. It's because yes. uh, 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Exactly. And um, speaking of the collaboration and strategic alliances, when someone who is new to networking goes to these events, mm -hmm. um, they may have a nervousness. Some people have not networked since the pandemic, since before the pandemic. Right. What recommendations do you have for them? Just show up. That is one of the biggest things, show up. And uh, as nervousness is as outgoing as I am, I used to be very shy. Uh, one of the biggest things I would tell you whenever I go to the, to the events, Almost act as if. It's not fake it till you make it. Make it. It's mm -hmm. faith it till you make it. Faith it till you, you make it. it. It's show up as, hey, listen, this is the person I am. And believe it or not, most business owners are very receptive. If, hey, listen, this is where I'm at in my business. Mm -hmm. I'm new to this thing. Ask for help. Yes, yes. But one of the biggest things I, uh, I, I always lead off with a speech at, my, at our events is that Put away your selfish ambitions for the for the few hours that you're there. Ask questions. Ask, how can I serve you? Yes. What do you need? Because if you don't have money, you need to bring value to those individuals to even get their time. Because and we know as business owners, we don't always have every moment of the day to give to people who really aren't going to add any value to our lives. And as much as we love them, it's, there's some, it's a lot of people who will take and take and take. And so reciprocity. Correct. To be able to give something back in return. It doesn't have to be money, it can be time. And so even with like your event, I'm thinking of mine. Um, Miguel has come out to my events, he supported me, so I don't care if I'm the person at the door, opening up the door and greeting people. I'm going <laughs> yeah. to make sure that I'm coming to one of your events because I, I do appreciate what you do and what you bring to Jacksonville and to our business community as a whole.
And so this person who is nervous, who is supposed to faith it while they're in there, showing up authentically, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, I would say, again, go up and just shake hands with people. Say, hey, listen, my name is, this is what I do. What is it you do? Okay. And then don't focus on handing out your business cards. Um, we know salespeople do this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, hey, listen, if, if you need this, if you need this, if you need this, if you need this, I sit back and I will literally ask questions about you the entire time. Very good. And there's something that, that I've learned from one of my mentors, uh, Chris Patterson, is something called conversation stacking where you're in a conversation and you find questions, you ask questions that's about their family, about their life, about their jobs, about their hobbies, some of their successes, some about their failures. Yes. Because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Agreed. And so passing out cards, following up is something that I used to have <laughs> a problem with. So I would go out and I would meet all these various business owners and then three months later I would finally reach back in the bag and pull out all these business cards. Missed opportunities. Correct. So whenever you are networking, you're networking strategically, meeting people is not enough because we're like super busy. We're running businesses, we're out mm -hmm. in the community. We're we're both partners on YouTube. High five. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm finally, I'm, I finally got that going on, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so what is the significance of just following up? Look, so I'll give you some specific points about this right here. So my grandparents, so my grandmother specifically said, fortunes on the follow-up, fortunes on the follow-up. Uh, most salespeople, most deals don't get closed until the eighth contact. And it was, so when you follow up, it's not just a, a text message, a phone call, a voicemail, a DM, a drop by. You gotta be creative with your follow-up. Okay. It can't be, hey, Eunice, you and I, we met at this event. When do you wanna do coffee? And they don't they ignore you oh i'm gonna give up they, they didn't want to meet me they, they didn't respond back you have to be consistent and persistent with your and keep showing up 100 percent because yes. this is the first time you and i are actually meeting outside of an event mm -hmm. but we've have known of each other probably since i don't know when your last event was yeah, so uh, i would say at least a year because i don't know how long you've been in the box jacks group so yeah and, so so it's been a while but you know just following each other and being consistent with your post and your message and your branding so you may have a business but then i also like to consider ourselves we are a business oh, too yeah, 100%. and so we're always showing up authentically mm -hmm. not trying to be perfect no. but just showing up consistently you're posting pictures of your family you know when i see something going on with your family i feel like it's my family like oh, yay well, come on through. <laughs> 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 All right, so what should a business owner, um, we talked about that one. Um, this is a good one for me. What is your favorite quote and why? I, I was thinking about this on the way here. One of the biggest things is, um, I think a, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Is you have to be a hunter, a gatherer, and a farmer at the same time. Wow. As an entrepreneur, you can't rely on just one way of surviving and building your business um, and also you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take you have to be willing to to fail be willing to say hello to someone and then they ignore you and mm. uh, say feels character yeah yeah <laughs> and if anything be comp be okay with laughing at yourself at your failures um i think the guy that we made he's got a sense of humor mm -hmm. and that's the guy that we made. That the guy that made us. God made us. Okay, you <laughs> uh, see, laugh at yourself. <laughs> Be willing to laugh at the failures and, and the awkward times as you're building your business. Because if you take yourself too serious, you're not going to be a likable person. Okay. How long have you had like your your longest business that's still active? How long has that business been oh, in existence? In August, be thirteen years. Thirteen years. Yeah. How many businesses have you had fail, and or that you just decided were not a good idea? Failing. Well, let's just say this. In entrepreneurship, find one thing and master that one thing. And don't go after every shiny object. Mm -hmm. I know during the pandemic, when things were looking like the shutdown was happening and they said, you can't meet people face to face. I was scared. I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with my financial business. I'm like, I go to everyone. I'm prospecting. I'm networking. Had to pivot. Yeah. So I looked into e commerce. I was already learning e commerce prior to. Uh, the pandemic mm -hmm. and I tell you I, I made some very fast money uh, through some online platforms mm -hmm. and I realized as I started to get traction I started to learn it it became a new hobby it became fun 
I wasn't making the money I was making in my financial business, but I was making money to where my, I felt a little bit accomplished. Yes. But I had to realize in my season, that's play money. Go get the real money and focus on what you were, what you were doing prior. Okay. So to answer your question, there's been businesses that I would start, but uh, I would call them little hobbies because if they're not making no money, it they're not, it's not a business. It makes it's, no sense uh, at all. Yeah. The reason why I ask that is because we're going to be helping business owners because right now it's slow for a lot of businesses. Yeah. And so we have the faith walk, but at the end of the day, bills still need to be paid. Um, and um. the phones are not ringing, the customers are not coming. And then the cost of materials, the cost of supplies, everything is increasing. Um, yeah. And so the reason why I was asking that is because sometimes I feel that businesses are afraid of the pivot. But you mentioned how you took one business that was face to face mm -hmm. and then stayed within the same industry and then went into e commerce. Yeah. And so, one of the last questions that I'll ask, and this wasn't on our list of questions, is how would you encourage someone who's afraid to pivot? The business isn't growing, but they're still doing the status quo. Okay, so you got to realize this uh, uh, it's like disciplining your kids. Um, if you got multiple kids, you can't discipline one the same way as all the other ones. Uh, I've got a two-year-old, and he is destructive right now, and he's at that Leadership place. skills. Yeah, yeah. My first son wasn't like that. And so I'm trying to pivot. Okay, well, I'm teaching him the same things I taught my other son, but again, we, we, in our family, we were watching fights and fighting. Mm -hmm. We're teaching my son, first son, or sorry, my second son, how to jab. He's going up everyone, he's punching him. <laughs> it's, you have to look at the tools and resources around you. you. You can't do the same thing you've been doing last year in 2023. Uh, or as going we, into 2024. Yeah, as a, and understand this: the things you're doing today might not come into fruition for another six months. Mm -hmm. You have to do whatever you got to do to stay in business. So I don't do business plans; I do business models. Okay. Uh, so pretty much every three months, every quarter, I am reanalyzing my business and I'm making changes in real time. Yeah. And so that's something I would definitely recommend. But I, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, 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 no. I, 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 I agree with that. I believe that it. it I think it truly believe on what business you're in. There are need-based businesses, there's serv service-based businesses. Mm -hmm. If you're not quite making the money you need to make doing what you're doing and you gotta still pay the bills, mm -hmm. hey, maybe you limit the time you do on that and yes. you gotta go, and don't be afraid to go back to a job. On yes, yes. Um, I left my nine to five 10 years ago this month and I left it based off of inspiration. Um, I could have gone back out of dis desperation and um, there are times I should have gone back financially just like whoo thank God that month's done but going through that time I pivot and I would find ways to earn income okay but that was in alignment with who I am where I'm not draining myself and I'm not doing things just to, to pay money. yeah just to pay the bills because and again, that's sometimes easier said than done for certain because people. Because you have a backup, you have a family, a supportive family. Correct, correct. Yes. So when someone else didn't have to do what they have to do, but still at the end of the day, um, if your business isn't paying the bills, mm -hmm. your business becomes part-time is what you're getting at. 100%. And you go work a job on a full-time basis. So you don't give up on your vision, you're yep. just pivoting temporarily yep. until maybe the, the season changes or the market changes. Yep, but constantly be growing. So one of the things that I've learned in, in, in our financial services business is that all the books about being successful have already been written. All the autos have already, have already yes. all been recorded. There's just not enough listeners and enough readers. So during the time of pivoting and growing, you have to stay in a cocoon of, well, I'm still gonna self-improve. I'm still gonna focus on learning my industry. So if you see an opportunity or you network yourself into something new, it's preparation is when luck meets, it's when opportunity shows up. So just constantly be feeding yourself new information. You know I love talking to you, and I, I have like a million questions. Yeah. <laughs> My last, last question, like a Baptist preacher. I haven't gotten off the pulpit yet. <laughs> automation in small businesses. <laughs> I, I, I could not run a business without automation. Yeah. So like I have a virtual receptionist. Um, it's just so much that I do. I have a classroom management system that sends out the electronic books, the confirmation. You tell me you didn't get something, I click a button, it goes back out to you. So businesses that are refusing to pivot and who are not accepting AI, regardless of how scary it might be, mm -hmm. I own the computer, I am going to master this technology. Um, do you have any recommendations for you know businesses that just don't want to, you say we have to stay current and we have to also uh -huh. um, prepare for 2024? 
No, look at it this way. I think you need to embrace AI. It's, uh, it's not something to be afraid of. Uh, there are some doom days, doomsday things that could come to pass. <laughs> we ain't there yet. We're not there yet. Uh, um, and if that happens, uh, lean on Jesus and uh, see what happens. Uh, but in, in all honesty, AI will simplify your business. I've found a few different apps, websites that's allowing me to honestly cut down the workload on my social media platforms. It's making things a little bit more creative too. Because you see these speakers you see the business owners and they're post a photo but if you add a photo with some caption or some video with some some captions more and more attention more lights yeah you, you again if you're we're talking about attention ai is going to just continue to help embrace the the things on social media but automation and follow-up mm -hmm. i'm telling you as an entrepreneur have a website together have a uh, constant communication with your audience stay consistent stay in people's faces because when people come across hard times and when they need your services, as long as they followed you, they're following their story, they're learning who you are, yes. they'll go after you versus the big brands. Mm -hmm. And then you've been consistent. Correct. And so I, the last thing that you said really stuck with me because I have not been out networking a whole bunch because I have so much going on here. But the way that I have been networking is to me via social media. Oh. And so um, when you were talking about, hey, follow up, send those emails, et cetera, the ebooks. And so if that's not something that you have incorporated in your business, I'm going to actually ask that you do because it's actually part of networking. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be surprised how many people forward my emails, my campaigns, wherever I send out to someone else. And I say, well, how did you hear about us? Oh, my friend sent it to me, or I saw it on Facebook. I love that. Okay. I love and that. So finally, um, congratulations. I know we said before on becoming a YouTube partner. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, I can see clothing. I, I can see everything else in the future that you'll be able to add. Yeah. Um, how do viewers find you on YouTube? We talked about all your other, your IG. But yeah, so YouTube. if you literally go and type in I am Miguel Camargo, so okay. I A M M I G U E L, and then last name is C A M A R G O. Or if you just type in Miguel Camargo Flow, okay. my, my stuff will pop up. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I add those links, you all. This has been Miguel. We appreciate you so much, and I thank you for that. coming and joining us. And, of course, my name is Eunice with Florida Train Academy. If you haven't liked our video, go ahead and do so. Also, subscribe to our channels, well, and we appreciate you. We wish you much success as you progress as a business owner. Um, 2023 and 2024, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment areas. And if it is specific to Miguel, I'll make sure that he actually answers it. Otherwise, I'll be responding to your comments. You all have a great day.